charity marathon here from the Paizo conference room. Uh, all day today, we're going to be running Pathfinder, Starfinder, and doing some staff Q&As in between as we support uh, Camden's Concert, a uh, charity for cystic fibrosis uh, research. Um, that is a, uh, a, a syndrome that has affected my family personally, so it means a lot to me um, to be able to partner with Humble Bundle and with Dynamite Comics to bring you the Pathfinder Dynamite, Pathfinder Worldscape, I'm sorry, the Paizo Dynamite, Pathfinder Worldscape, Ultimate Crossover Humble Bundle. Um, this, I'm really excited about this bundle. It's got all kinds of awesome stuff. So let me talk about what it's got. It's got at the basic tiers, a lot of the, the just the basic how to get into Pathfinder RPG stuff. So you've got your digital beginner box, you've got your, uh, your core rule book, you've got some starter adventures. As you go up under the higher tiers, um, you can unlock other adventures and other supplements. Now almost everything in this bundle is completely out of print, uh, in uh, print form. So we're bringing you uh, digital issues of Pathfinder, uh, or rather digital Pathfinder modules, um, digital uh, adventures uh, that pl plug into the Pathfinder Society. At one of the higher tiers, you get 26 Pathfinder Society adventures the entire uh, year of the Risen Rune uh, season from Pathfinder Society. And also Dynamite, our, our great publishing partners in the comic space have brought some of their awesomest titles. One of the great things about Pathfinder Worldscape, which is a series that we've been working on with Dynamite for over a year now, is that it takes some of our characters from the Pathfinder world and gets the, they get the chance to meet some of Dynamite's great uh, archive of legendary fantasy characters. So the six issue Pathfinder Worldscape series that came out last year it crossed over the Pathfinder iconic heroes with the likes of Red Sonia and Tarzan and John Carter of Mars, all of whom will be playing today uh, in a two hour War for the Worldscape game. Um, after that, we're going to be doing a uh, one hour Q&A about the Worldscape project and some of the new stuff that's in this bundle, which I'll get to in just a second. Um, following that, Owen Stevens is going to come in and do a two hour Starfinder demo. There's no Starfinder stuff in the, uh, the bundle uh, this time. But we know lots of people are very interested in it, very excited about it. And since Pathfinder Worldscape is kind of a multi-genre thing anyway, it made a lot of sense to bring the Starfinder team in for a two-hour game. And then they'll be doing a one-hour uh, Q&A on Starfinder. We know that the game's brand new, lots of questions about the rules, lots of questions about what's coming up. We're going to have that entire Starfinder team come in and answer some of those questions for you. After that, uh, we're going to bring in John Compton, and he's going to run uh, some scenario from the uh, Year of the Risen Rune, which is one of those 26 adventures that do that come in that pack. Um, but before we get rolling and before I introduce you to my colleagues here uh, to my left, I want to talk a little bit about the highest tier of support. So if you give $45 to this Humble Bundle effort, um, you are going to get an amazing package of stuff. And I mean literally a package. Everything else is a digital download, uh, which you can download immediately from Humble Bundle on the Dynamite side. You get a code and you can bring it to paizo.com and get those things immediately added to your, to your account. Um, but at the $45 tier, there's going to be a package of stuff that we'll be sending you in a couple of months, um, and that is going to include five gaming miniatures, four of them based on Pathfinder Worldscape. We'll be using some of those in today's uh, stream. So this is John Carter of Mars, we've got Tarzan, we've got Red Sonia, and we've got Tars Tarkas, the giant green Martian companion of John Carter. Um, I personally have been looking for uh, gaming figurines that go along with Barsoom and uh, the John Carter of Mars stuff pretty much for my entire gaming career. And, you know, there's some knockoffs and some, you know, old, old lead stuff that you can get. Um, but these are officially licensed. So these are the actual likenesses of Tarzan, uh, Tars Tarkas, uh, John Carter of Mars, and Red Sonia taken directly from Dynamite's comics, many of which are also available in this bundle. Um, in addition to that, our partners at Ninja Division have added a fifth figure to this bundle, which is an exclusive alternate sculpt of Navasi, the, uh, the iconic operative in the Starfinder game. So you can see on the Humble Bundle page, it's linked through this video, you know, she's holding out her gun like that. This goes uh, in support of uh, Ninja Division's uh, Kickstarter, which is uh, operative right now. There's about six more days on their Kickstarter as we record this, and they've been doing these Starfinder Masterclass miniatures. There's dozens and dozens of different sculpts available through that effort. So if you, if when you're done pledging here at Humble Bundle, you can pop over there and check that out. Lots of great Starfinder miniatures. So those uh, miniatures, and also at that top level, you're going to get four brand new 
comics that will never be available in stores in physical form. They're only going to be available through this Humble Bundle effort. It's four more Pathfinder Worldscape specials. So last time we did a Humble Bundle, we did a Worldscape one-shot specials with Red Sonia, with John Carter of Mars, um, with, uh, let's see, who else did we do? Tarzan. Uh, Tarzan, and with the Pathfinder Goblins. This time around, we've got four different uh, one-shots. We've got Vampirella, uh, the famous vampire character that goes back to the 70s that Dynamite's been published for several years. Um, we've got uh, Deja Thoris, uh, the wife of John Carter, a kick-ass warrior in her own regard. Um, and that's written by Chris Carey. I wrote the Vampirella story. I also wrote a Herbert West reanimator story. I uh, couldn't resist bringing an H.P. Lovecraft character into the Worldscape project. And then the last one is uh, uh, Swords of Sorrow tie-in. So uh, Pathfinder Worldscape Swords of Sorrow one-shot. It features the character the Traveler from Gail Simone's epic um, uh, female warrior multi-comic uh, property crossover from several years ago. Which, by the way, is available in its entirety in this Humble Bundle effort. So, one more thing before we get gaming, and that's how do you do your pledge. You pick your, your level, and then there's a little slider at the bottom of the page. You can decide how much of your donation goes to Humble Bundle, how much goes to Paizo, and importantly, how much goes to Cam Camden's concert. Uh, cystic fibrosis affects my nephew Camden, um, and it's a serious illness uh, that is life-threatening, and uh, the research has come a huge way in the last decade or so, and, and it's continuing to make great uh, strides so that kids like Camden can live long and healthy lives. So uh, it really means a lot to me and my family uh, for people to support this charity. And I'm really happy uh, that you can be along with us for the ride. So with all that aside, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, of course, during the Q&A and throughout the day, let's get gaming. So I've gathered three of our favorite Pisonians uh, to my left. And I'd love if you guys could introduce yourselves, tell you tell the, the audience a little bit about what you do for the company um, and, and who you'll be playing today in this two-hour Pathfinder Worldscape event. We'll start with you, Mark. Uh, I'm Mark Moreland. I'm Paizo's franchise manager. Uh, I help make sure that um, both internally and our, our licensors are all um, working toward the same brand continuity for both Pathfinder and Starfinder. Um, and today I will be playing uh, John Carter of Mars. Ooh, the gentleman of Virginia. Will. <laughs> I'm Will Chase. I'm the warehouse no manager. Accent. Uh, my team and I are responsible for shipping out everything that Paizo ships to game stores, to individuals, and everybody in between. And today I'm playing Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. You, you also fix all of the broken stuff in the office. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the stuff in the it's a very important role. <laughs> Hi, I'm Linda Zeiss Palmer. Um, I am a developer for Pathfinder Society Organized Play. If you haven't given Organized Play a try yet, I highly recommend you check it out. And um, today I'm going to be playing Red Sonia. All right. And I'm Eric Mona. I am the publisher and chief creative officer at the company. I'm also the author of Pathfinder Worldscape Comics uh, with a couple of assists from some other folks along the way. Um, and I'll be the GM today. Uh, yeah. So are you guys uh, ready to begin? I should mention that each of them uh, is using a miniature that is available through this uh, Humble Bundle effort. And... Um, each of them is using a character that comes from some of the, the back matter of the, uh, the, the, the Pathfinder issues. Linda, if you could hold that up. Yes, yeah, so there's Pathfinder Worldscape number one. That is Red Sonia. Her stats appear in the comic. I had to create new archetypes for almost all these characters because one of the funny things about these old pulp fantasy characters is they don't wear a lot of clothes. And so uh, we had to, well. to create... Oh, no, no. <laughs> this is not an adult script. Uh, we, we had to create... Uh, new archetypes that were um, uh, designed for characters who are maybe better able to dodge blows and things rather than just loading up on armor, which is a bit of a departure from the way a lot of the Pathfinder rules work and something that I, as a longtime player of a shirtless barbarian uh, and from the very first days of Pathfinder, have always wanted is more uh, low armor martial archetypes. And so I like to say that Pathfinder Worldscape is the Citizen Kane of no armor martial <laughs> archetypes. And I hope that you agree. So, with that in mind, uh, if you have questions, feel free to, to throw them onto the chat. Yeah. We've got uh, our unseen partner here, Mr. Dan Tharp, 
who is our social media coordinator and our marketing guru. And he uh, will be taking your questions and uh, we'll hit him during the Q&A at the end of this. So um, with that in mind, you guys ready to begin? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we begin uh, in the Worldscape. The Worldscape is a um, extra planar prison dimension that was created thousands of years ago by the Archmage Nex, uh, who's got a country named after him in Galarian, who once besieged the city of Absalom. Um, but uh, before that, he created this vast tower called the Spire of Nex, which is a mile tall, and it sits outside the great city of Absalom at the center of the Pathfinder world. And inside this impossibly tall chamber are a series of stacked demiplanes that Nex has created. And one of those demiplanes is the worldscape. Many, many thousands of years ago, Nex set up the worldscape to bring in heroes from different worlds and to have them kind of do battle with one another in this prison plane. But he wasn't doing it just for fun. What he was doing it for was that while all of those warriors who were taken from out of time and from different worlds and different dimensions throughout the multiverse were battling within the worldscape, Nex was able to create phantom duplicates of those characters that he then used to besiege the city of Absalom. Now, poor Nex, like everyone else who has tried to besiege the city of Absalom, it failed. The city of Absalom's got quite a few wizards. It even now has the defenses of the Pathfinder Society to, to help. And so it's a much more difficult thing to to do than it seems to to besiege a city but next tried to do it with the greatest heroes from three different worlds those worlds being the world of earth our world and the world of red sonia from the hyborian age and the world of john carter originally and of course the world of tarzan as well also the world of barsoom which is where john carter ended up uh, otherwise known to us as mars and the world of galarian where the worldscape itself is sort of situated so you as great heroes of earth and Barsoom uh, have been drawn into the worldscape where uh, uh, you found yourselves manifesting um, beside a great stone pillar marked with the, the three interlinked symbols of the Archmage Nex. Uh, over the course of several adventures, you learned a little bit more about this dangerous land. Uh, you found yourselves to be uh, far more reputable characters than most of the brutes and louts and murderers who are sucked into this dimension. And over time, you were able to find a group of like-minded heroes known as the Council of Jungle Kings. Now the Council of Jungle Kings was actually founded by you Tarzan <laughs> and you are the legendary first king of the Council of Jungle oh, Kings. But I too am a king. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, and we have a queen here as well. It is a, a team of royalty. And you guys, um, uh, in particular you, Tarzan, uh, you uh, have been uh, trapped in the worldscape for years and years and years. And eventually uh, there, there's a struggle between the, the owners of two different artifacts. One was known as the scepter and one is known as the crown. And for time immemorial, if someone could unite the scepter and the crown, they could open portals to any of the three worlds that are in conjunction to the worldscape. Now, an arch villain of Red Sonia is known as Kulin Gath tried to unite these two items, and that is basically the plot of the six issue Pathfinder Worldscape miniseries. At the end of that miniseries, Tarzan, you were sent back to Earth. Spoilers. Uh, well, hey. <laughs> uh, you know, there's going to be some spoilers. Uh, to, uh, to, as a reward for having guarded uh, oh, the good. crown for, for like 70 years. Um, and you were sent back to Earth. Uh, by an extraordinarily powerful jungle spirit known as Phantoma. Now, Phantoma normally looks like a beautiful blonde woman, uh, almost like a Veronica Lake sort of character. You know, real drop dead, late 30s, early 40s. Tarzan Lake. <laughs> yes. um, but when she, she becomes upset, her skin turns blue, her face takes on a skeletal demeanor, and she still has really weird blonde... Tarzan still like. Yeah, she still has really weird long blonde hair. She is, to the people of the jungle of the worldscape, she is not just a hero, she is a goddess. And she is worshipped by many. Not so much by the Council of the Jungle Kings, who consider her, if anything, just one step above a peer. But many of the common folk and the warriors of the, of the jungle area uh, consider Phantoma to be a goddess. 
Um, you went back home. You reunited with Jane Porter, your beloved wife, your son Korak, and uh, continued jungle adventures for some time. But eventually you found yourself drawn back into the worldscape. Now, out of deference to the Council of Jungle Kings, all jungle heroes who have followed in your mighty footsteps, uh, you, uh, you don't, you're, you're not interested in being the king anymore. In fact, you'd quite like to return to your family as much as possible. All of you... Uh, have been to the worldscape before and have found yourselves drawn in. When you return to your home worlds, you lose your memories of what happened here. But the moment you return, it all comes back to you. So um, it's a dangerous land. Uh, it's a frightening land, a land filled with monsters and, uh, and powerful warriors. So like home. Very much like that, <laughs> but with dragons uh, okay, and right, uh, right. and uh, with like you know maybe a Nazi here and there. Well, actually, that's no stranger to you. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. or to oh, to I'm sorry, that is strange. Yeah, to it's you. strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Civil War era. Yeah, John Carter. So, um, but uh, you know, time and time again, you find yourself drawn back to the Council of Jungle Kings. The main leaders of the the, the Council of Jungle Kings now are uh, a, a great warrior, also from Earth, very much in the Tarzan archetype, known as Thunda. Uh, and his beloved wife, uh, a woman named Fa. And Fa uh, is the current uh, owner of uh, the scepter, which is one of the items um, that uh, gives dominion over the gateways that connect the worldscape to the rest of the world. Otherwise, you can't leave. It is very, very difficult to escape the worldscape. So you know that by uniting the scepter and the crown, uh, that's the only way that you could get back. Now, it isn't too much of a problem because at the last time you visited the worldscape, Phantoma herself had possession of both the scepter and the crown. So you have returned to the worldscape, you found your way back to the crawl, the enclosure of the Council of Jungle Kings, and uh, a great celebration has been called, a great feast of animals uh, uh, from the jungle, some strange creatures, uh, given that many of them are from Barsoom, a lot of things with six legs. Um, uh, but they're all delicious when cooked by uh, the, the Council of How Jungle Kings. How much booze? A lot of booze. Uh, there are okay, fermented good. beverages of all kinds, including some that are completely new to you that you've never had before. So uh, that probably is one of Red Sonia's respites in this strange and dangerous <laughs> land, is the amount of unusual booze that comes through here. Um, you guys uh, are... Uh, uh, you don't come together. In fact, you don't even know that you are here in the worldscape together. And uh, you find yourselves congregating around this great um, jungle hero named Thunda. Now, Thunda's a, a big, burly, uh, former uh, army uh, guy who crash-landed in a lost world type of environment. In fact, that entire lost world of Thunda's has been incorporated into the worldscape. So this is as much his home as, as anywhere has been for him uh, since that fateful plane crash. And in the, the bustle of, of jungle warriors and different folk all celebrating the return of great heroes to the worldscape, Thunder approaches the three of you and he says, Ah, my companions of long time, welcome back to the lands of the Council of Jungle Kings. What brings you here today? Magic. Ah, <laughs> yes, it is everywhere. Juju. <laughs> Tarzan, it is great to be in your presence once again. Uh, yes, indeed, yes. And Red Sonia, it is always a pleasure. I hope that you are not mad at me from our last encounter still. I suppose we shall have to see about that. <laughs> yes, we will. We will. I know my wife, Fa, will be gra uh, very glad to see you. Uh, last time uh, you were together uh, was when we defeated your arch enemy, Kulin Gath. Ah, yes. We still sing songs of that day. But um, before we, we feast, I must, uh, I must tell you that the Queen would like to speak with all of you together. Um, not necessarily immediately, but certainly before the end of the evening. Uh, foul things have been happening once again in this in this jungled land, and uh, and we believe that the three of you, uh, your arrival must be most fortuitous because uh, we have been unable to find a solution, and we believe that the three of you might be uh, best suited to help us with this problem. But uh, tell me, uh, how have your adventures been since last we met? How about you, John Carter? They've been great. Yes? yes. How are things on Barsoom? Uh, some trouble with the therns, as always. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. 
Otherwise good. That yeah. death cult is also giving mm. us trouble here uh, in the worldscape, as you well know. Uh, what of you, Tarzan? Uh, how is your wife and child? Tarzan enjoys family life. Yes. Quiet life. Yes, it is. Uh, Very different ways. from here. Yes, well, luckily I have my family here. Uh, my wife. Must be wife. nice. Yes. Well, sorry about that. Don't need to pick old wounds, <laughs> Tarzan. Uh, Red Sonia, how have you been in the Hyborian lands? The foes have fallen before my blade, as they always do. Oh, very good, very good. Well, I hope that uh, that what uh, we have to present to you does not put you in the way of foes, but this being the worldscape, I'm afraid the chances are very high. But first, let us eat. I believe there is a brontosaurus leg on the uh, mm. the flames. Mm. Uh, I've been told by... But there are only four legs on these brontosauruses. There are four legs mm. on these brontosauruses. So in fact, I've <laughs> been told that feast. brontosauruses do not actually exist, but here in the worldscape, there's a world where they must exist. So let us enjoy brontosaurus legs. Like, uh... yep a dab a doo Yeah. <laughs> I'm from the 40s. I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, so you guys go, and there's a number of uh, different uh, libations and foods available to you. Uh, there are colorful tropical birds flying all around. Uh, you see an elephant grazing nearby, and you know that that must be the, the mount of the little jungle boy, Wombi, who wears a red turban and can speak with the animals. And he's probably around here somewhere. And you you hear the chittering of monkeys and it's it's actually quite a festive uh, occasion and you you reminisce with some of your old friends and then finally a uh, thunder comes back to you and he says uh, the queen would uh, would see you now if, if uh, and we would see the queen very good Gladly. let us yes. not make her wait indeed uh, sh she's not so good with weight uh, and he leads you uh, so he leads you through this crowd and kind of um, past and this is a little odd for you Tarzan but past uh, what looks like the the, um, the the tree house where built by your father where you grew up and that is where you lived in sojourn for several years here before you you left the first time and it's like they're keeping it Almost oh. like a like a mom keeps the teenager's room, you know. Tarzan, the heart is warm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and uh, they, so you walk past that, and you finally come to uh, like a, a large round sort of wooden enclosure uh, with a with a peaked roof, but no walls really around it. And within that, there is a large stone throne, and seated upon the throne is a beautiful uh, woman. Uh, she has uh, a, a skin tone that is a, a little bit darker than than your. Um, and she's got dark hair. She wears a circlet um, and kind of a fur, sort of a one-piece outfit. She looks very regal. Uh, she looks quite used to sitting in a throne. How does frankly. she compare to Dejah Thoris? Um, well, Dejah Thoris is incomparable, so you can't compare anyone to Dejah <laughs> Thoris. Good, good. But uh, no, Dejah Thoris, uh, she's a little bit more, uh, she, well, she, she's not red-skinned. Okay. Uh, wow. And uh, But she's very beautiful, and uh, she looks very regal and very much in control. But it's more of a kind of a primal uh, uh, okay. power. Whereas Dejah Thoris <clears throat> rules from the heights of the Towers of Helium and has servants and beautiful clothes not with necessarily covering Why would a lot she of surface those? area yes, yeah. but she you know she has beautiful diadems and things like that yes. um, whereas uh, Fa is a much more simple uh, primal beauty to her and she sort of lounge she's not lounging but she's she's resting comfortably in her chair the the, the scepter which is about a three foot long rod uh, that, that's topped a little bit almost like a chess piece uh, just sort of sits across her lap and she says uh, my friends Welcome back to the lands of the, Con the Council of Jungle Kings. Uh, it has been many months since uh, you last were here, um, but uh, I'm afraid in the grand scheme of things, not much has changed here. Uh, we have managed to beat back the armies of the Gorilla King, Ruthizek. Uh, there are still uh, scattered attacks now and again. Um, but they are they have already lost and they know it and it is only the animalistic fury that that keeps them fighting against our, our folk but um, I'm afraid uh, well something very concerning has occurred just in the last few days and when I heard that the three of you had arrived I couldn't help but think that perhaps fate had brought you here to help us deal with it um, I ask you to take a few steps closer, for I do not wish what I'm about to say to reach the ears of everyone uh, here in the, in the enclosure. Uh, I think they would find it most distressing to learn, so please draw closer. 
uh, she looks behind her, and standing off to one side of her is a uh, a, a guy um, with sort of half length blonde hair, sort of wavy. Kind of looks a little bit like a surfer dude, honestly. But he's wearing like a blue loincloth and a red cape, and you know him to be the great jungle wizard Taboo, and uh, he is the sort of magical advisor of Fa and uh, the most formidable. Um, magic user essentially um, in the Council of Jungle Kings and she says uh, um, just three days ago uh, Taboo informed me that uh, he has lost all contact with Fantima the mm -hmm. jungle spirit indeed the goddess who protects us and who guards the crown uh, usually uh, is able to communicate via Taboo's fifth sense. Uh, and uh, he unfortunately um, has lost all contact with her. Mm -hmm. And we do not know uh, where she may be. Now, Fantima has always kept to her own, um, but she never leaves the jungle. Her power is connected to the jungle. So we know that she could not have gone to the Red Desert, she could not have gone to the city of Shireen, she must be here somewhere, and yet she is outside of our ability to contact her. We have sent some scouts uh, to key locations where we know that she has been in the past, and uh, they have thus far they have not returned, and we have been unable to locate them uh, as well. Uh, whether they were defeated by the remnants of Ruthazak's army, whether they may have been beset upon by dinosaurian creatures that roam the jungle, it is, um, is not known at this time. Uh, now, they were not any of the kings, uh, you know, so uh, they were lesser guards and, and, and scouts and the like, but nonetheless, their loss. Um, it has affected our community and uh, we are very very concerned that something may have happened to our jungle goddess and we would like you to take up the banner and to help us find out what has become of our beloved Fantoma. Tarzan in. Of course. Excellent. If now, the scouts have not returned then they probably went to the right place. Well or the wrong place. Uh, the place that they went is an old ruined city named uh, named Koras that is uh, that is about um, a full day's journey uh, away from uh, the enclosure. Uh, now this city uh, is notable in that it is one of Fantoma's most common haunts, and uh, there is a large contingent of. Uh, refugees, one could say, from throughout the worldscape. As you know, there are many areas of the worldscape that are very, very dangerous, and so when people flee uh, the tyrant in Shireen or free the, the, the therns that you mentioned, the death cult, many of them will end up in the jungle because they know that they, they have some measure of protection from the council, but also the canopy protects them from the prying eyes of their enemies. And many of these uh, refugees uh, find succor in the protection of Fantoma herself. And so she has amassed quite a cult of worshippers here in this city. Now, our relationship with this cult could best be described as cordial. Well, our relationship with Phantom herself uh, predates the, the rise of this cult. Uh, the cult is very standoffish. Um, you will know them uh, because they paint themselves in blue uh, pigment. Uh, as if to honor Fantima herself, and they have skull-like uh, face paints. Um, now, it may be that uh, they will be friendly to you, uh, or it may be that they be, will be unfriendly. It is unknown how they will be reacting to the loss of a woman that they undoubtedly see as their goddess. Now, whether Fantima is a goddess or not, I am not able to say. It is not my place. I can say that she is much more powerful than any of the council, uh, and her loss uh, would be catastrophic for the jungle. My experience is that many who claim to be gods are not. Uh, indeed, yes. Uh, uh, Fantima does claim to be a goddess. Uh, 
I have yet to see proof that would say otherwise. Um, but Best do not test. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, my uh, scouts uh, can give you directions. Um, uh, but uh, before uh, you depart, um, Taboo here would like to speak with you. And the man steps forward and he says, um, Welcome back to the, uh, to the jungle. We're happy that, uh, that you have come. Uh, I am most distressed because uh, usually uh, I can see things in my mind uh, about, you know, how, how the jungle's going, how, you know, the <laughs> threats that have come. Uh, but when I cast my fifth sense out into the jungle now, I, I, can't, I can't sense anything, at least in terms of uh, phantom. So, I'm glad that you all are here, but uh, as I said to Lady Fa, you know, we've got great warriors here, but uh, maybe they need a little bit of the old jungle magic, you know. I'd hate to see the mighty first you king. Got, you got a little of that jungle magic that helps you uh, see things? <laughs> uh, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's not what I'm... That, that we, can, that, we can share the sacred pipe when you return. But no, uh, this, is, uh, this is serious, man. Uh, I'm concerned that, uh, well... Let me just say this. I've seen all you guys fight before. And uh, I don't mean to criticize your outfits. Look at mine. I wear a cape and a loincloth, right? You want not to talk. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm afraid that some of these, uh, these primitives, um, uh, the, the, the cult at Koras, I'm afraid that they, uh, they might be cutting you up real good. And without, uh, without a priest... Or a wizard, uh, maybe that's going to do a little damage. So I've taken the liberty to prepare some libations for you that I think might assist you in uh, recovering. You, you from don't want to come along? Uh, well, I want to. <laughs> uh, I understand. I want to, but given that Phantoma is missing, uh, I'm the I'm the only real magical protection that the Council of Jungle Kings have. So how so, convenient for you. <laughs> Lady Fa actually looks right at you, Tarzan, and, and she says, uh, it is not a matter of convenience, it is a matter of survival. I have forbidden uh, Taboo oh. from leaving the crawl, uh, at least until we have a better idea of what's happening with Phantoma. So uh, it is not a matter of cowardice, I assure you. And Good. Taboo's like, yeah, it's totally not cowardice. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, but I've got some potions for you guys, if you'd like. Uh, and he pulls out, like, from behind the throne, there must be a table or something back there. He pulls out these, like... Um, uh, basically irregularly matched bottles um, that are filled with a, like a blue liquid. And he hands a bottle to you, and it's a beautiful, like, um, it looks like maybe a fine artisan had created it. Um, it it's, it's, it's got, like, indentations up the side of it, and it comes to, a, a, like, a, like, a nozzle at the top. Um, and it's even got calligraphic writing on it, and it says Coca-Cola. Mm. On the side of it, and he hands you that. Uh, he hands you uh, just a crude, like a, like almost like a boat bag. You no, know, just, but just like a, like a beaker kind of you thing. Get a, you get a camel back. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, and then uh, and Red Sonia, uh, he hands you uh, a, like a short squat bottle um, of green glass, and it says brut on the side of it uh, which is weird uh, and he keeps handing out different bottles but fundamentally that's, that's where you get your swagger yeah. <laughs> fundamentally um, they, they are all uh, potions of cure moderate wounds and how many in all? Uh, two each so you each have two potions and he says um, I hope that'll uh, you know keep, uh, keep the infection away if you, if you know what I mean um, Tarzan thinks this bodacious <laughs> oh I'm also from the 40s, so I don't know what that means. Yeah. I just look like a surfer, man. Um, so, uh, what, is, what, is, what is surfing? Yeah. If, you so. think, if you think any sword is going to cut the devil, then you have not watched me close enough. Mm. Um, both Ser Taboo business. and... Yeah. Uh, and uh, she, she beats that Fa swordsman kind of, Valros. They that kind of give each something. other kind of a knowing look mm. because they've both seen you cut up so bad before. But they're <laughs> like, oh, yeah, Red Sonia. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> the red is not from her hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, uh, and, and so Fa says, uh, you know, uh, 
it is very dangerous to travel these jungles in, at night. I would recommend that you rest the evening, uh, catch up with old friends uh, before setting out uh, at dawn. Um, do you have any questions uh, for me or for Taboo or indeed for any of the council? How did you come to possess the scepter? Ah, well, uh, when... Uh, spoiler alert! Uh, when uh, when Phantoma helped us to defeat Kulangath, uh, the scepter was returned to me. I have been guarding the scepter for some time previously as the, uh, the queen of the city of Shireen, um, but now I have returned to the council and I'm ruling from here. Uh, Phantoma has the crown, um, and that will prevent uh, the two items from falling into uh, the wrong hands. Uh, of course, one of our great fears, not just is of uh, the psychological impact of Phantoma being gone, uh, is that the crown might also be gone as well. Mm -hmm. And if that is the case, then none of us will be able to uh, return home through the traditional means. And uh, that could pose significant challenges uh, for the power balance of the entire worldscape. Um, uh, it's another reason why I am not able to accompany you on this, this mission, and indeed why most of the council will stay to protect the scepter. Ordinarily, with the other piece being in the hands of the Phantoma, uh, we could be a little more lax in our security, but I'm afraid this is reminding me all too much of the Kulingath incident. Do Phantoma's followers know she is missing? Her cult? Well, we, uh, we have to assume that they do, uh, or perhaps they know more. You know, perhaps she is not missing and we have just lost contact with her somehow. They will be the ones with the most information about uh, what has occurred and uh, uh, what's happened to, to our beloved Phantoma. But again, they are fanatical in their support of her and there is no telling how they might react to uh, the loss of their goddess. Yes, well, uh, anything else uh, that you you need to know? What um, what sort of threats do you believe we may face um, in and around um, the city of Koras? Well, uh, in addition, well, the cult itself keeps the, the area immediately surrounding their city uh, largely, you know, free of, of natural predators and the like. Um, but... Uh, it's hard to say. Um, there have been, I regret to say, uh, reports, uh, sketchy reports, but it sounds to me uh, as if perhaps uh, the therns have returned uh, in some ways. <sighs> yes, you will never be rid of those therns, John Carter. Uh, but uh, cockroach. By by foul Issus, they continue to plague me. Yes, Issus. Uh, we thank you for. Revealing the fraud of that goddess. Uh, um, that oh, that also is a spoiler for a hundred and nine year old books. So sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, but yes. Um, uh, no, again, the, the the rumors have been of Barsoomians in the in the jungle. So our assumption, uh, you know, lightly armored uh, men with rifles and spears, uh, does sound uh, like the, our old enemies, the Therns. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that. You know the the jungle teams with with dangers. I laugh in the face of danger. We are ready. <laughs> that is you. You three are the bravest <laughs> of all of our allies. Almost absurdly so. That must and, be why we are uh, the ones who are drawn yes, here, and we are thrilled to have. Rather you. than so those weaklings from you can Galerion. Come and serve, but I still stand. <laughs> that is testament enough to my strength. Oh yes. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. What did you say, Red Sonia? I said you could call it absurd, but I ah. still stand. That is testament enough to my. Oh, strength. I did not mean it as a. I, I didn't mean it as an insult. I just meant it was almost unbelievable how brave all of you are. The red comes from her rage, actually, um, not her hair. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so <laughs> red can come from many things. Please, um, many of the members of the council, of course, are aware of the the developments regarding Phantom. But many of the servitors and. Uh, rank and file of our soldiery uh, are not aware. And so so we should keep this quiet. Yes, I think that would be for the best if, if you were to mm, simply enjoy the company of your fellow uh, heroes uh, this evening um, and not, you know, spread any any rumors that might cause undue alarm among, among our subjects here. Um, so, uh, I will... Uh, Tarzan, you, of course, are welcome to... Uh, 
stay in, in your old cabin if you would like. Uh, but I will have other quarters prepared for the two of you if you wish. Uh, well, I mean, I will have it done. Well, you can sleep wherever you want, but of course I will. And she, when she says you can sleep wherever you want, she looks at Red Sonia. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but uh, yes, in the, mor- in the morrow we will uh, have a, a light uh, breakfast and we will see you off. All right. So you are dismissed. Um, and then you guys go back. Uh, there's still a festive atmosphere. It's a little bit dying down. You know, it's getting a little bit later in the evening, but uh, there are still many of your old friends and strangers. And uh, all I, I do my best to, to appear um, un, uh, unaffected by this news. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to tip anyone off that, that maybe we've just heard some dire information. Um, so I try and, you know, participate Make in the festivities. Oh, I'm sure I'm good at that. Um, yeah. 20 okay um pretty you you do a pretty good job uh alcohol helps <laughs> yeah so um tarzan Better dancer yeah. you what are you doing tarzan gonna get crunked on jungle juice okay <laughs> uh so you sit down uh and, and then what do you want to do red Sonia? that sounds like a great idea okay so you guys are are you are you just hanging out with them as well yeah <laughs> okay so you guys are all drinking you're having a great time there's jungle drums in the background it's it, there's dancers i mean it's it's a very very festive tarzan's uh, kind of party it's yeah. tarzan's <laughs> kind of party i, I also sure. would like to speak to some of the 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 natives um mm-hmm. Um, just to share their stories of adventure, I want to. Um, I like to to hear other people tell of their exploits. Awesome. So, yeah. So you're you're kind of doing that, and you're uh, you're talking to uh, to a really uh, uh, friendly and jovial fellow uh, named King Rex. Uh, who is a, uh, a warrior. Only a little bit redundant. Uh, okay. Well, no, he, was, he did that on purpose. So King Rex's story, King Rex's story, you kind of like this guy. Like, he's he's pretty Silly, badass. Yeah. So King King uh, Rex is from the River Bantu tribe in uh, the uh, in in the same area that, that uh, Tarzan is from in Africa. And he is an African chief. And uh, he, over time... Um, got pretty tired of all these basically European dudes coming into the jungle and being like, I'm the king of the jungle. (laughs) And he's like, wait a minute, I'm literally the king of the jungle because I'm the king of my tribe. So he took Rex, which is a Latinized, you know, or Latin word for king. And so he named himself basically... King King, 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 you know, because he has to be even hey, more of a king. That's, than that's all pretty these. clever. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. and he's got. I, I, I suggest to him that he he adopt the title Jeddak, so he could be Jeddak King oh. Rex. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, so you guys are sharing, you know, exploits, and he he especially uh, enjoys telling you uh, the story about how uh, fairly recently, actually, um, he and an ally called Cave Girl. Uh, accompanied Red Sonia, in fact, and destroyed a whole temple of Isis uh, and killed many, mm. many thermos. High five! Yes. And, uh, and that is in the Pathfinder Worldscape Red Sonia one-shot uh, from uh, that is available as a digital thing in this bundle. Um, anyway, so he tells you that exciting story. And you guys are really... I mean, you like almost nothing more so, than killing therns, So yeah, Oh, no. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's very, very um, exciting. So while I'm talking both with him and with others, um, I'd like to just sort of glean any information that I can get about goings on beyond the um, the crawl, okay. uh, if they have any of that, just to sort of be a little bit more prepared for what we might face. All right, make me a diplomacy check. Uh, not as good, nine. Okay. Um, yeah, you, uh, you, the, basically the only thing that you hear that strikes you as a little bit outside of the ordinary is, uh, is actually Thunder tells you. And you know that Thunder uh, has a saber-toothed tiger named Saber. And uh, and it's like his best friend. It's it's almost like it is his animal companion. I mean, I have I have Wula, so I understand right. how you that goes. Right, you definitely yeah. understand. Yeah. Now Saber's not quite as fast as Wula, you know, yeah. your dog, uh, but um, but is ferocious and uh, is actually uh, became quite good friends with Tars Tarkas, your best friend, mm. who was not with you on this trip to the Worldscape, but who was last. He time. is always with. So so right. So Saber um, is is sort of uh, you consider a friend of yours okay. as well. Yeah. And so Thunder tells you that um, the day before yesterday, he was very disturbed to find uh, another saber-toothed tiger, this one with a completely white pelt, uh, in the jungle. And it had been shot 
uh, with some kind of gun. But um, very unusually, uh, it is almost as if the round that went into the tiger then exploded with great force, which to you sounds a lot like the kind of it's special like a guns, weapon, like a yeah. radium weapon mm -hmm. from from Barsoom. So he said, you know, he said. Uh, Fa probably told you that we think that there might be some rogue Barsoomians mm -hmm. nearby, and, and unfortunately, um, you know, seeing that uh, solidified that in my mind, and, and Saber um, has been lethargic and sad, you know, ever since uh, since he saw that that slain creature. Um, so, uh, while you guys are sitting enjoying yourselves, a little boy comes up to you, and he's barefoot. He's got a little red loincloth. He's got a big red turban, mm -hmm. slightly darker skin, and uh, you know him to be uh, the jungle boy Wambi. And Wambi uh, can talk to animals, and he's very <laughs> precocious. And he is uh, one, even though he's probably like eleven years old, is Good one of the most. With Favorite yeah. and one of the the, um, the the most beloved members of the Council of Jungle Kings, and I'll thank you not to sing Disney songs or we'll get you know it's charged. Not Disney. Okay, whatever it is. Doctor Doolittle. Oh, is... Doctor Doolittle. Yeah. Don't do that. Uh, uh, okay. So um, so anyway, so uh, so Wambi comes up to you guys and he's like, Hey, Red Sonia, Tarzan. Yay! Yay. So Wambi. Hey! <laughs> and he's like drinking like not alcoholic juice you know, like it's out of out apple or something <laughs> and he's all like i'm so happy that you're back things have been pretty boring around here lately what what brings you i saw you guys talking to to queen fa earlier what was that all about uh she just say hi make me a bluff check <laughs> Does drunk Tarzan get a drinking bonus? To uh, I'll give you a plus two, actually. <laughs> two more, two more drinks. Hey, there you go. Minus two. But right now, I'll give you a plus two. Oh, I'm in, I'm in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eighteen. Actually, okay. tw twenty. If you give me a plus. A plus so, two. and what do you say? Uh, Tar Tarzan just say hi. Oh, I bet she really appreciated that. Uh, so, how's things on Earth? He's no longer <laughs> seems focused on that. At all. <laughs> Uh, how are things on Gosh, Earth? I, 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 I sure miss it. Of course, your Earth's from a lot longer time ago than mine. <laughs> um, but yeah, wow, how are you guys? We are well. We are surprised to find ourselves here, but glad, glad to see our friends again. Oh, well, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. Uh, it's great, too, because this time we're not being attacked by an army of apes. Like last time. No. So yeah. you say things are boring, then? Nothing interesting has been happening around here? <sighs> well... I don't know. Um, my friend Taboo uh, has been kind of mean to me lately, like he's trying to keep something from me. I don't suppose you know what that's all about, do you? Mm -hmm. looks right I'm going to roll a bluff check. <laughs> um, let's see. That's going to be a 21. Some things are best kept among adults. Oh, I guess. And he like kicks me <laughs> right at the ground. And he's like, Golly. oh, jeez. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll grow up. I've been the same age for like 50 years here. But, um, okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, bye! And he just kind of takes off and he goes and hangs out with like a hippo or something. Uh, so, uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do for the rest of the evening? All right, so in a few hours, things kind of draw down. You know, there's, um, there's uh, still some... some people drinking and still some people dancing mm -hmm. but the slowly but surely the drum beats get quieter and quieter and people go off to their own little um their huts and things. except for red sonia who I'll keeps take... dancing yeah mm -hmm. yeah what is, red, what is red sonia i'll, I'll take the queen up on her offer uh which is to sleep anywhere yeah, okay so, so where are you gonna sleep then wherever she was suggested uh okay so she's got a little house uh, mm -hmm. set aside for you and, and you go back into oh, your yeah. old house tree house so um you go into your old tree house and the interior of your tree house is very very unusual um it, it as i mentioned at the beginning of the session when you guys appear in the worldscape you would always appear next to these what are called summoning pillars they're essentially obelisks with the three ringed symbol of necks inscribed onto them and um you uh the Council of Jungle Kings, as if to kind of show their dominion over the worldscape, has actually toppled a whole bunch of these things and has incorporated these stones into like the wall that encloses the the crawl. Um, but also, uh, the interior of your house is contains tons and tons of these. And when you were so Tarzan originally had been in the worldscape for like ninety years or something. Now, in a in a sort of 
out of character way. There are many Tarzans, there are many worlds, and, and you're just essentially one of them, but you uh, were guarding the crown within this room, and somehow in connection to these pillars, you were able to kind of relive events of your past life, and you're kind of in like a trance most right. of the time. And so coming into this room again really kind of reminds you of that period. And and it was it, it, very much, you know, <laughs> and, and so it, it reminds you of a time where you didn't have, uh, um, where, where your only contact with Jane and Korak uh, was through just sort of a dream state, you know, and 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 presuming you can get back home again, uh, you know, you've been in a very different place for the last couple of years, even, you know, you've been actually physically on Earth with your family and everything, and so it just kind of reminds you of that sojourn that you have, and it's it's pleasant, but it's also kind of disquieting, and so you find yourself having a, a difficult night. Uh, you don't fully sleep, and when you sleep, you, you you're having a hard time determining like what's real and what's just like fake and all that. Um, Red Sonya, you're so drunk. Taboos brownies. <laughs> you sleep like a, a log. You know, you you are you snore loudly, frankly. Uh, and and, uh, and John Carter, I imagine you sleep just as perfectly as you do everything else. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so okay. So the morning comes. Uh, they as they've said, they've set out. You know, just uh, basically. Um, uh, like just some light snacks and some fruits and things like that but also they've put together like a, a pack of rations essentially for each of you um, uh, Fa uh, is there looking much less regal not sitting on her, her throne um, and it, she, she approaches you almost more as a friend than a regent at this point and she, she tells you that uh, that um, she would like very much if you guys could return back within three days uh, and with a report of what you've come to learn about Fantima. And if Fantima herself has fallen into some level of distress, um, if you could uh, resolve that situation, that would, have, of course, be for the best. Um, particularly so because that would then deliver the crown back to the Council of Jungle Kings and you guys and could let us go home. home. Yeah. Um, you, all have like important, yeah. you all have important family members waiting for you. Not so much. Uh, your family was butchered before your eyes as a child, yeah. but you've got things to do. So, um, so uh, with that, uh, they give you some directions. It's off a bit to the northwest, um, and like I said, it's a, a, about a day's journey, give or take. Um, and uh, yeah, so if there's anything that you would like to do or collect or, or whatever before you set off, now's the time. Otherwise, uh, we will we will move. I forward. assume we have all of our equipment. That's yeah, on all the sheets. equipment that's on your your sheet, mm -hmm. you definitely have. Um, and plus, you know, you've got uh, enough rations to get you there and back for three days. <coughs> um, and you know, if there's anything that's not on your sheet that you would like that you could get at the Council of Jungle Kings, they'd be happy to provide it for you. We have our provisions. We know the way. Okay. Great. Um, so, uh, you guys, uh, do you take any special precautions? Or you just kind of wander on your way? I assume we let Tarzan go first. Scout a bit. Yeah. I, see, I seem to be a bit... You can take You can break you eight ahead of yeah. us and just, you know, go, sort of swing I'll back. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, you do have uh, power uh, to uh, break you eight, which yeah. is to say swing through the jungle canopy. Yeah. Um, and so you, I, 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 I believe that the way that it works is you can just kind of walk, walk right through I, I the trees. It, it, I think it pretty yeah. much gives me... Okay, so, um, so. so this uh, flip mat here, which is the flip mat uh, forest... Um, is a representative of kind of the jungle depths. Um, there are loose trails, game trails, and things like that that are represented on the map. Um, let's start you guys out kind of at that entrance. By the, um, by the, over yeah. here? Or yeah. by the Actually, you know what? Let's start you out here. No, I'm thinking about it. So you guys all uh, are here. Right. We'll put Tarzan. Santa, you'll be in the trees. Tarzan How far ahead in. would you like to be, Tarzan? A good 40 feet, I think. Okay. Um, so we're going to put you like right over here. Yeah. With good? the idea being they can keep they can keep to the trails, and I can. All right, so I'm going to say that, that around, any yeah. five foot, you're, you know, you can just leap that without okay. even having to roll. But anything that's uh, more than five feet, so like I'd have to roll for. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 quite a good right. roll for that. Yeah. Um, you so, want me to teach you how to jump? I'm good at that. <laughs> it helps to be born. Uh, it helps to be locked yeah, in on yeah. the planet. Yeah. 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 So no, that's worth no, talking no, about, no, actually. Gravity. So, so part of the the conceit of John Carter of Mars and what makes John Carter so superlative at fighting and feats of strength and things is that being from Earth, uh, 
No, it's just that he's just Well, he's just so awesome. Um, but on top of that, uh, being from Earth, it has a different gravity than Mars. And so on gra uh, Mars, gravity is much lighter, which allows him to make giant leaps and to do huge feats of strength. Um, when John Carter is brought to the worldscape, he's kind of brought as he is on that world. So he, you know, he the the gravity is sort of locked. The effective in. gravity the effective for me gravity on for you this is Mars' is, gravity, yeah. no. you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's why, for example, when Tars Tarkas, uh, the the giant green Martian, comes to the worldscape, he's not struggling to breathe and you know weighed down by the heavier gravity. He too is operating under kind of his own gravity. Now, if John Carter, uh, when he periodically makes his return trips to Earth, if you were to be sucked into the worldscape while you were on Earth, you yeah, would that actually, wouldn't be so good. You would not be so good. I'd be no. really good at escaping but, my own tomb, though. right? Yes, <laughs> you're always good at that. But you are very, very, uh, very powerful and very strong yeah. at this stage. So, so yeah. So it looks so. like I can leap 150 feet <laughs> uh, so. as long as I can see it, and there's and I have an unimpeded arc to in the way. So I assume oh. the trees are going to get in my way. The trees would like impede. That. Yeah, I mean the trees um, are like. 40 feet high. At least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and dense with, enough with that fine I could... creepers. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's okay. it's it's very difficult terrain, you know, uh, not that that's a real game term, but it's difficult terrain uh, anywhere where there are trees, except for Tarzan, you can just go right through that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so here no. we are. Um, <laughs> <coughs> one more sneeze. <coughs> Third time's a try. <coughs> yeah, there you go. Always coming threes. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, you see periodically, and this isn't the first time you've seen this, but periodically throughout the trails and things, there are these like skull fetishes that are driven into the ground. Now this doesn't happen right away. This is three hours into your journey. About the most dangerous thing you guys have seen at this stage is like a leopard up in the trees who, who just kind of runs away mm -hmm. from you. Um, but slowly but surely, as you get closer to the to the lost city of Koras, uh, you see these like sticks and crude fetishes that incorporate uh, skulls, human skulls, or, or in some cases not human skulls, but certainly humanoid, intelligent people skulls. And the thing that's sort of disturbing, on top of the fact that this is obviously a dead person, um, is that many of these skulls are, have like streaks of blue pigmentation mm -hmm. on them. And so uh, it's not hard to come to the conclusion that perhaps you're getting closer and closer to this uh, this city that is sacred. Do these appear to be um, warnings or like is like scarecrow type things or are these posts? Yeah, or, or are they more of like you're entering our territory? This is the you know. Um, just, here, I'm gonna, here we revere Phantoma. I'm gonna ask for a knowledge nature check. Not exactly appropriate. I don't have I'm that. guessing you don't have that, but I bet somebody. I bet. Does. I bet Tarzan does. Uh, believe it or not, I don't think so. Okay. Well, uh, I have survival. Yeah, you make me that. All right. Well, I have. That. Okay. Uh, and I get a twenty-two. Okay, <laughs> so that's pretty good. So Tarzan, Tarzan you know his stuff. You okay. realize. Um, that this thing is probably kind of a warning. Not necessarily like, you're going to die if you come here, but just kind of like know that this is the territory of Phantom mm. Cult. We are on the cult's turf. Mm -hmm. um, so so, part so this of is a cult warning and not a dead cultist? Well, maybe both. So. Yeah, you that you can't. <laughs> little column A, little column B. Yeah, you know, it's it's a great honor of these cultists to be made into a scarecrow when they die. Um, we are close. So I'm just wondering if we were to um, put blue paint on our faces as a way mm. of showing that we respect and venerate to some degree Phantoma, that we are mm. on the cultist side, whether that might um, make our interactions with them a little bit more peaceful. Um, is there any way to to get any of the blue off this uh, thing and yeah, put it on sure. ourselves. Yeah, it's it's kind of like I wouldn't say it's necessarily freshly done, but it's kind of like a wet, almost like a clay sort of a, okay. a texture to it. So you could, I mean, you know, you I could there's spit one on it, skull here. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could. Yeah, you yeah, should sure. get it wet, you know. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so you know, if you want John Carter spit all over your face, I think you do. Who does you do? Right. Yes, <laughs> it's. I guarantee it's the finest spit on all of Mars and Virginia. Um, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, you could do that. Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to do that. I don't know whether anyone else is going to try. Okay. 
Seems reasonable to Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Red Sonia? I might as well, I suppose. All right, Red Sonia becomes Blue Sonia. Yeah, purple Sonia. Yeah, purple Sonia. Yeah, purple Sonia. Don't forget the red. Yeah. All right, um, Tarzan, you're up in the trees, huh? Mm-hmm. Have, All right. Having a look about. Right, and I'm going to assume you guys have now kind of closed yeah. in on this. Yeah, because sort of we came up to it to yeah. get the um, yeah, no, yeah, You're going to get down there as well? I'll, I'll get down okay. there. Okay, um, I would like all of you guys to make me a perception check. Totally doesn't mean there's an enemy nearby. Hmm. 15. Probably not. Oh, only a 24. <laughs> uh, 14. Tarzan's pretty good at perception. So, um, uh, 15, 24, what? 14. Is it higher because I'm in favored terrain also? I think uh, that it would be Yeah, it would be, yeah. yeah. So, so, okay. 26. Okay, so... Um, what level are you? Uh, 12. Uh, so, so you get more than a plus 2. Oh. I don't have Corvo, but really high. Good. So, um, okay, so you... Uh, oh. Tarzan especially. I'm sorry, what did you get, Mark? I got a 14. Okay. You don't... This, you're oblivious. I'm busy You're painting so my busy face. painting your face. Yeah. Um, and like. you get a sense of this, Red Sonia, with the 15, but with a 24, you can feel something. There's like a like a, a light rumbling um, beneath you, like underground. Like something is tunneling its way towards you. But you hear it first. What do you want to do? Shh! Tarzan feels something. Okay, so Tarzan, you put your face like yeah, right like... down to the ground, <laughs> and it's idea. getting louder and louder and louder, <laughs> and then immediately bursting up right in front of your eyes what? is a giant six-legged rat creature that what? just bursts oh. up from the ground and is all, and you can just smell from its hideous oh. mouth just disgusting. Disgusting disease just festering in there. Oh. And you can see it's got rotten teeth. I mean, oh. it's definitely alive. It's not like an undead creature. How does that throw up on it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It probably um, likes that. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, tiny. another one appears here. What? Yeah. And yeah. another one appears here. And I would like you guys to roll me initiative, please. Tarzan. <laughs> Seriously, I'm really abandoning my face. Uh, I am, yeah. Six. Ooh, not so good. <laughs> oh, I did real well. Okay, uh, a six for uh, John Carter. Uh, Red Sonia, what'd you get? I got a 23. Whoa! Uh, Tarzan, what'd you get? I think a 10. Okay. You're in your favorite terrain, in my favorite terrain it's so it's, No, I, I rolled an 8. Oh, okay. okay. Totally. So, and then uh, my guys go... Are these R-O-U-S's? Uh, no, but actually... Well, technically, te yes. Uh, well, technically yes, they are. they are technically rodents <laughs> of unusual size. Um, John Carter, you recognize these creatures. These are Barsoomian rats called Ulcios. But unlike normal, normally a Barsoomian rat's like about the size of a cat or maybe a dog. These things are more like the size of like a pony. Um, <laughs> and so they are much larger than any Ulcios that you have ever seen before in your life. So, uh, Red Sonia, it is your turn to go. There is one of these things right behind you. Well, it just made a mistake. <laughs> Very likely. Okay, turn I around. I swear, foul beast, that this day shall be your last. All right. It doesn't understand English. <laughs> yes, but I'm still activating yes. my death spell. Really. Oh, 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 you're death vowing that thing. Okay, so Red Sonia's got a special power where she can swear to basically defeat a creature, and then she kicks ass while she's doing that. Yes? Yep. Okay, give me a, give me a shot. All right. Draw my blade and stab it with right. my long sword. All right, that was not nearly as good as my initiative. Not great. Fourteen. AC fourteen. Yes. That's exactly what you needed to hit. Oh ho! So you I only you, missed on a natural one. Your uh, your blade cuts right into this thing, and it squeals in pain. How much damage do you do? All right, that's going to be fourteen points of damage. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that takes a nice solid chunk out of this thing, 
but it is still uh, up and still pretty hardy. And in fact, it is going to take that opportunity to make a bite attack against you. Uh, and it gets only an 11, which I'm guessing is not good enough to hit. No. Uh, the other one, actually, there's two on you, Tarzan. You may be Lord of the Apes, but you're not Lord of the Six-Legged Barsoomian Rats. No. Right. So, uh, so one, of them, <laughs> one of them takes an attack on you, ooh, and is terrible, uh, a 13. No. Yeah, and the other one attacks, but you're and I uh, clearly need a different die. It's still probably not high enough. Yeah, I think you're good. Uh, so I need another die because I just rolled a three. My Ulcios all fail. They are weaklings. And now it is Tarzan's turn. So Tarzan is not in base to base with any of them, correct? Uh, you kind of are, actually. Okay. They, this one's come right. to here and this one's come so, to here. So you Because they don't have reach. I may draw my... Uh, well, they... Do they have reach? Um, I'm going to say they do do have reach. Yeah, they got five foot reach. So actually they are a, a okay. little ways away from you. So may I take a five foot step and draw my dagger yeah. at the same time? Yeah. And then am I allowed uh, No wait a second. They don't they have five foot reach. They're 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 in base to base. Oh, they okay. they cannot. Alright. Okay. Yeah. So you don't need to move. Alright. But drawing my dagger is a free yep. action. I'm gonna draw a dagger okay. and just riddle this one with holes. Okay. Bring uh, it on. So I believe I get three attacks. If okay. I'm reading this correctly, um, uh, that's a 30. Uh, yeah, that's a hit. Okay. And that's max damage, which is pretty cool. Um, it's going to be 12. Okay. And second attack. Uh, does a 29 hit? <laughs> Yes, yeah, well, yeah, 29 yeah. hits. Good, good job, Lord yeah. Greystoke. <laughs> 10 points of damage. Okay. And for the final attack. Oh! oh. That's a, a crit threat. A possible Ooh, crit. a potential crit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does a 22 hit? Sure does. That's a crit. Critical hit. Tarzan. So Tarzan takes his dagger. I'm going to borrow a d4. What does he do? Explain the critical hit. What happens? Putting the dagger up above his head drives it right down into its brain. Nice. How much damage do you do? Five. And I double strength to yeah. him? Okay, so 16, 21. No! Uh, <laughs> with a dagger? <laughs> yes, with a dagger. <laughs> Tarzan is a formidable opponent. And you take your, your dagger in both hands, just bring it right down into the brain. Uh, 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 while screaming yes. the victory cry of the bull ape. And you 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 uh, stab it right kind of in the brain case. And the thing just like all six of its legs just, you know, go stock out. And it falls down dead. It is dead. Nice job, Tarzan. Uh, next up we have John Carter of Mars. All right, so I'll five foot step to here and draw my longsword. Okay. Um, and I will then do a full attack with that. Okay, so that's going to be a 31 and a 17. A 31 and a 17 are both hits. Okay, um, so that'll do 15 points on the first hit and 13 points on the second hit. So 28 total. Okay. Uh, not, not bad. <laughs> you gravely wound the Ulcio, but it is okay. still up. Uh, Red Sonia, it is your turn. Make me a perception check, please, first thing first. Alrighty, 18. Okay, you see, um, coming from this direction, so this game trail down here, there is another one of these things coming, and it is like loping forward with all six legs super rapidly, and its beady little black eyes are looking right at you. But you're also, you know, in melee combat. It made its own death challenge. So, uh, <laughs> so what do you want to do? I want to show that thing what will happen to it if it gets closer to me. All right, sounds good. By using a blender of death on this guy with All my right. long sword and my short sword. Is that okay. an ability? No, but it sounds no. cool. <laughs> it should be one. Yeah, no, I like that. Add right. that to the list of abilities death. to add to something. Yes. yes. Like blender that. of death. All right. Um, to start my blender of death, 21. Uh, hit. First hit with the long sword. Okay. Okay, first hit with the short sword is going to be 20. Hit, hit. Second hit with the long sword. Jeez. 
is going to be a 16. A hit. All right, then finally the second hit with the short sword. My God. <laughs> is going to be a 13. A uh, miss. Okay, two long swords ha. and a short sword. <laughs> All right, bring on. I'm a short. <laughs> <laughs> The red comes from embarrassment. Not oh. her hair. Yeah. Oh. They are uh, s about seven levels. Seven. Yeah. Right. So it's going to be plus eight. Sixteen. 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 Sixte
so that's a, a 25 and a 19. Okay. Uh, those are both going to hit. Okay. So the first one does 19 points okay. of damage, and the okay. second one does 14. Awesome. Uh, it's still up. So <laughs> your, your first blow. Zero kills. Your problem. Your Dog. first blow, you know, you just swipe your longsword, and it actually, not only does it kind of cut into its its neck, but you think it would have been a killing blow, except the sword also hits that post with the fetish uh, thing on it, and just you annihilate that that thing. Oh, that's like, gonna piss off the cultists. Apart, falls oh. and, uh, and 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 it just get you just get right in the the side of this thing's neck. You pull your sword out, and then you throw a a, a stab in as well. It gets it in the throat, uh, spitting up blood. Uh, it some of it has like weird black ichor in the blood, cool. uh, but it is still a Lives. Tarzan knows your problem. Sword too big. <laughs> Use tiny knife. Yeah. Use little stone knife. <laughs> um, Red Sonia, it's your turn. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shot at cutting that thing right in the slash that John Carter cut open in its throat. See okay. if I can make that a clean decapitation. Sounds good. Alrighty. So with my long sword, that's going to be a 32. Oh my God, you hit. <laughs> <laughs> And let's see about that. Okay, uh, 11 points. Uh, okay, it's so Red Sonia, you show the boys how it's done. You just stab it right in the ear. And for a second, oh. your sword kind of jabs around in its brain box, and then the tip of your sword comes out its other ear. It jerks around a little bit, and it is dead. I soften him up for you guys. <laughs> uh, and yes. I guess that, I don't need that, that card anymore. <laughs> Um, okay, something happens. Um, a figure uh, steps out from behind the uh, foliage here, and it is a beautiful woman, um, and she is wearing uh, fairly light uh, robes, actually, um, and uh, she has got bright red skin. So she looks like like, uh, like, like Deja Thoris, okay. your wife. She is a red Martian from Barsoom. There is no question about it. Um, and kind of at the same time, uh, from over there stands a much larger figure. And I'm using the figure for Tars Tarkas for this because indeed... <gasps> Tars Tarkas, my old friend! It is not your oh. old friend, Tars Tarkas, <laughs> but it is a hulking, like, eight and a half foot tall, four-armed green Martian. Um, unlike Tars Tarkas, who is part of the Thark people, uh, this one's got all kinds of skull fetishes and tattoos. Do I recognize those raiments as a, as a different... Oh tribe? yes. Okay. Not just a different tribe, but of the hated Warhoon tribe. The Warhoons of of mm. Green Martians. They gave me quite the trouble when I first arrived on Barsoom. Let me tell you. The so woman, well, as she steps out, then let friends. us give them trouble in return. Yeah. The woman steps out and she says, "Why, if it isn't John Carter of Mars?" She says, uh, "This." is not just for me, but it is for all of Zodanga, she says, which is a, a nation that you basically overthrew the leadership of. Yeah. And she <laughs> brings her hands together. They were no match for helium, let me tell you. Casts a spell, <laughs> and an arc of lightning <laughs> what? blasts out from her hands. Oh. Magical lightning. And it shoots directly at you, John Carter of Mars. And I would like you to make me a reflex save, please. Is that going to hit... It All is. Of us? Hold on. Um, no, for, it's not that kind of lightning. We're not. With, okay. We're not with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you need a reflex save from yep. me. Eighteen. Uh, that's good enough to save. So you're going to take half damage from this. Okay. As. Oh, oh, nice. I'm oh, glad I'm oh. taking half damage. The lightning <laughs> shoots out and does oh. eleven. Oh, uh, 17, 20, 23, 26, 33, 36, 38, 39 points of damage, save for half. Okay. Round it up or down? Down. You round down. So. So 17. So, uh, uh. No. No. Would you say 38? 38. Yeah. So 19. There you go. 
So you take 19 points of damage. Uh, Red Sonia and Tarzan, you guys are like, whoa! You know, I mean, you are not used to seeing magic. Actually, you're probably, you're more used to seeing magic. You're the least used to seeing magic, oh, actually, yeah. of all yeah. these people. So you're like, what kind of weird... I'm like, what kind of radio gun was projector, that? <laughs> uh, was, was just, uh, was just... Yeah, I thought uh, rays were used shot to fly, not to hurt uh, people. Right. Um, <laughs> so here's the problem. Um... A secondary arc of of lightning uh -oh. shoots uh -oh. out from John Carter at that point, and I need Tarzan and I need uh, uh, Red Sonia to um, make a reflex save. Uh, what if I fail Whoa. instead with a natural one? Is that? Did you get a natural one too? That's How about a seven? seven. Okay, I, I got a seven. Okay, total. so uh, you actually save. You you fail. So um, let me give your da your damage separately. So uh, Tarzan uh, takes let's see, 10, 20, wow, 29, 32, 34, 35, 39 points of damage. So again, you'll take 19. Ooh, uh, and uh, shocking. Red Sonia, you <laughs> failed your save. So you are going to take uh, let's see, wow. 8, 10, 14, 20, nice. uh, 19, 24. 29, 31, 34, 35 points of damage. Uh, and that's it. So the, the spell fizzles out. Oh, no more? Oh, yeah, no, no, well, on, really? no more from her. Okay, this guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great. Man. 15, 20. Uh, moves here, and as he moves, he draws a couple of swords from his top two arms, Ooh. and he, in his bottom two arms, is holding a rifle. And he really wants oh, to shoot these. John Carter, Not these. but Tarzan <laughs> is in his way instead. So, he is going to shoot you, Tarzan. I should point out, it's the middle of the day here in the jungle, and you guys are standing in a little bit of a clearing. So sunlight is, in fact, filtering down, that may or may not become important later, no problem. But so this guy <laughs> takes a shot at you uh, with his Thark rifle. Uh, and your armor class, oh god darn it. What's your armor class? Um, 26? I so wanted to hit you with this, but I don't. But that's your touch Instead, armor class. Instead, uh, like, oh is yeah, it is your it's touch armor rifle. class. So my touch is 17. You by one. Oh. Roll the four. So, uh, so anyway, so this blast of uh, uh, of a radium cartridge goes flying right past your head and embeds right into the um, to the, uh, the, the, uh, the 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 tree behind you. Um, it then starts fizzing as it reacts with the sunlight and it explodes. Oh. Oh. Uh, and let me see what kind of damage that does. Let me remind myself what kind of Sounds damage that does. Uh, okay. All creatures, and this is going to be all of you, actually. Actually, I'll let Red Sonia, not you. But the two of you guys, I need you to make me a uh, reflex save. Oh, my God. 22. 12. Okay, so... Oh, I'm sorry. 20... John Carter, you take uh, two points of damage uh, from just debris and, yep. and shrapnel. And uh, uh, John, um, Tarzan, you take six points of damage Ugh. from this. Um, and, and the Green Martian's like, For the war hoon! Uh, incidentally, you guys can all understand each other in the world scale. So the, it's like a universal translator. So you can hear what they're saying. Um, all right. So now it is... What did I do with your initiative cards? Oh, here we go. It is... So we're still in previous initiative. Oh, yeah, we're still there. Tarzan, it's your turn. Oh, yeah. Is this thing wearing any kind of armor? Or does he just look like a big... Uh, like no, he's Martian? wearing, like, a, 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 a traditional green Martian garb. So he's got a couple of bandoliers of skulls, which look like human skulls to you. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a loincloth. He's got, like, a, a leather harness. Um, but that's really it. He's probably so dressed not, a lot like me, but with... He is dressed a lot, but, but with, with skulls. arms. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, he has four arms. I have four arms. Yeah. Your forearms are incomparable, <laughs> John. <laughs> I think Tarzan is going to charge this thing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. So... He also has uh, two swords, uh, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I have one tiny <laughs> knife. All right. All right, this is going to be good. So I'm going to charge and take a single... Okay, so you get a plus two on your attack because attack. you're charging. Could have been good. 
32. Oh, you definitely <laughs> had him. It could have been good. 32 wasn't good. It could have been crit. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It could have been, yes. Right, so... Any, is it plus two for damage? Yeah, uh, uh, no, just attack. Just, just attacking. Uh, so, ten points. Okay. Um, so, you knew you were hitting with your spear? No, my. Uh, with my, your my, dagger my, again? My, yeah, or my dagger. Killer dagger. Nice. Okay. Uh, Solid. You basically slice like a fillet off the side of mm. his arm, one of his arms. Uh, so he's uh, not real happy about mm. that. John Carter, it's your turn. All right. So. I am going to drop my long sword and move 5, 10, 15, 20. Am I moving at half speed here? Uh, if you're not going in the through clearing. difficult terrain, but not in the clearing. The clearing okay. Is, is so, yeah, so I'll move, I'll move 20 through, through regular um, uh, terrain and yep. then it, I assume moving into the shade of the, okay. the tree trees will will be an additional 10 feet of movement yep um so from here and and as i move i'm going to draw my radium pistol oh that's what i thought you were gonna do yeah um and i'm going to target um miss lightning bolt over here okay um and that's a 25 <laughs> touch you hit her okay um that's seven points of damage, and I don't okay. have the page with the radium. I got it. Radium. So, uh, the radium or, uh, gun does... I know that it does the 1d8 so, just normally. Yeah, so it does 2d6 points of damage. It's a, a DC with 15 reflex save uh, in a 15-foot radius. So okay. I get a reflex save. Uh, I'm probably going to fail it, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I fail it. Okay, that nine points. Okay. Uh, so you know you you shoot her and it and the the bullet blows up. Your bullet is not quite as big as the cartridge from the Tharp rifle. Well, because the explosion is, yeah. is just as yeah. bad. So um, how much damage did you do? Uh, seven and nine. Seven and nine. Okay, so uh, sixteen. She saved Voyager. Oh, oh yeah. man. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go. Okay. Uh, red, red Sony. Yeah, you guys will be fine yeah. without me. Anyway. All right. We got I'm going to leap over the bodies of my fallen enemies jokes. and right. charge straight into the face of Oh no. Lightning Lady. Okay. Well, now it's going to get in my way of shooting. Okay. Then go around. <laughs> okay. Sound logic. Yeah. Bring it on. All right. Long sword. Uh, is going to be a 25 to hit. Oof, duh. You hit her. Hit. I wasted my vows upon that beast. You will be my true foe today. She doesn't look super excited about that. <laughs> All right, um, 14 points of damage. Okay. Um, all right, uh, it is her turn. She takes a step back. Yeah, thanks for drawing her attention away from me, though, by the way. Because now she's going to cast, she gonna cast a spell. Uh, and let me just look it up real quick, like. Because I think there might be a problem with my strategy. But let me just double check real quick. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, okay, no problem. So she waves her hands and she says, I welcome the battle, but let us fight alone. And she, uh, a sheet of fire erupts like this, well, blocking cool. you from your companions and immediately lighting the forest on, on fire. Um, Tarzan does not approve of this team. No, Tarzan's yeah. not super yeah. happy about okay. that. California. Uh, okay, <laughs> the, uh, the, the Warhoon uh, Green Martian is now in uh, melee combat with you. Oh, uh, he's my dodge opponent. Uh, yeah, good call. Yeah, that's uh, not how. It, it's not how dodge works in no. Pathfinder, but no. that's fine. No. Uh, you, uh, <laughs> you're already benefiting from it. You're good to go. Okay. So uh, it's going to take a couple of attacks at you with the longsword. Right. Um, actually, drops his uh, his rifle at mm. your feet, um, and mm. is going to draw uh, uh, swords with his other arms, but only is going to take two attacks at you this round. So the first How many one does he have? is a total. Where's he has he four. Uh, first one is a total uh, loss, uh, miss. And then the second one, ooh, maybe is a hit. Uh, 23? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, 
but you, you charged. charged. So uh, your armor class is two worse. Would that oh. would that hurt? Uh, you? Two worse. Uh, my armor class is twenty four. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, all right. So you're good. Uh, and Tarzan, it is your turn. You are facing this oh. hulking, brutish, four armed, green skinned character with tusks coming out of the bottom of his mouth. I will kill him and take his tusks as daggers. Very likely true. Uh, <laughs> well, add him to your necklace. I'm going, yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to full attack with okay. my dagger. All right. Um, I will do first, second, third. Oof. First one is 29. Second one is 28. And the third one is 15. First and second hit. Oh. Oh. Hmm. Pathetic. Uh, 16, 18 points. Okay. Um, the the war hoon laughs at you and says, "Ha ha ha! It will take more than a tiny scratch to defeat Kel Kavoth." Kel Kavoth. Uh, By a thousand cuts, it is. <laughs> John Carter. It is your turn. You've not heard that name before. Okay. For what it's worth. Um. As a free action, I call out to my compatriots, asking them which of them needs my assistance more. They're both so headstrong. I don't know. I know. <laughs> They're both going to be like, help the other one. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, great. Tarzan, how do you guys this. respond? Tarzan's got it. What does Red Sonia say? By the way, this you hear it. This wall has separated us with the wall of fire. What she doesn't realize is that she's cut off her own retreat. Well. She kind of grimaces when you say that. <laughs> Okay, um, well, always being one for adventure, um, and, and having been damaged by her, I'm going to leap through the wall of fire. <laughs> through or over? How, how high is it? Uh, it's like 10 feet high. And I assume I have a clear arc to jump oh, over 10 If you feet. step outside the, yeah, the yeah. foliage. Absolutely. I mean, if I... If, about now, 30 feet. Carter, Mars. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm going to 5, 10, and then jump... I don't know how the 150 foot jump you can, you can be, detracts from my movement speed. It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I step out of here and then I jump Damn over favorite. so that I land. Can I land behind her? Sure. All right. Uh, so I'm going to land here so oh that I'm God. flanking. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, uh, you're not flanking yet because she actually took a five foot step away from Red Sonia to do that spell. So okay. she, you'll set up a flank for Red Sonia later. Okay. Um, and I am going to... Um, punch her with my unarmed strike because I dropped my longsword. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, God, but your arm strike. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, oh, she gets an attack of opportunity on you. Do you have improved? I have improved. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay. Uh, and that oh. is a 35. Oh, you hit me. Um, and that is uh, 11 points. Um, you notice Dunk. that uh, she has got around her neck. Um, Let's see. Let's right, but it's one d one d three. Oh, one d. She wears around her neck the uh, the symbol of the Malagor, which is a great giant bird of Barsoom that is the symbol of the holy, uh, not the holy, but the the, the royal family of Zodanga, mm -hmm. the, the hated rival of Helium. Um, Red Sonia, it's your turn. Consider yourself fortunate. With my ally here, your death shall be swifter. She doesn't consider herself fortunate. Um, <laughs> I'll take she that. Looks play. a little bit. She's used to losing. Scared. She's from Z Zadanga. Oh, burn! Mars <laughs> uh, burn. All right. Uh, Tarzan, bring her I'll out for that sick burn. Dice first. Okay. The first attacks and the orange and red dice for the second attacks. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. um, so the lowest of these was a fourteen. Is that it? No. Okay. Then does a second lowest of these is a twenty-eight? Is that? It? <laughs> Damn it, Linda! You know well, full well that that hits. Yes, that. Hits. All right. So I'll roll to confirm Nailed on the it. second on the on the second short sword. Roll to confirm. All right. That's not going to confirm. I don't think with a no fourteen okay. hit. So that will not confirm. Okay. All right. So these guys I'll hit, and we got plus another 12 for that. So 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, 32, <laughs> 34. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. Try to cast spells when I cut off your hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, like she's in attitude. No position to cast spells at all right now. I yeah, mean, no. The flanks. concentration check on that uh, one's pretty high. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no. She uh. <laughs> she pulls out a sickle. <laughs> Um, which one of you guys looks more wounded right now? Probably me. Uh, I... Oh, with Devermank. She hates John Carter of Mark. Yeah, I've taken 29. She, remarkably. Oh, yeah. yeah but... She turns her back on Red Sonia, which might be one of the stupidest things you can possibly do, <laughs> to attack John Carter of Mars. She's probably, as, as a Red Martian, she's probably offended by her name, though. She doesn't <laughs> the, even know her name. The, yeah, the, uh, the, very, the very idea that, the, oh. you know... That's, that's right, I haven't told roller. them my name yet. I no, no, I'm sure that. that that's going to work. Does a 15 hit? No! Okay. Uh, she gets another attack. Uh, no. <laughs> she misses again. Okay, at this stage, she looks very nervous. Uh, Kel Kevoth of Warhoon is going to attack you. He now has four shots at you. Um, you are no longer at a penalty because the, the charge was last round. So, and the dodge is built in. But you too. haven't gone again. So it lasts until the beginning of his turn. Has he not gone again? I, I attacked once. Yeah, he attacked once. Yeah. Oh, you did yeah, a full yeah. attack. He goes, okay, he that's goes right. right. That's right, you did. So, okay. So, uh, Kel Kevoth is going to... Hopefully I'll roll higher than a 7 on this die. Hopefully not. Yeah. Hopefully not. An 8. You did! I rolled higher. Uh, I'm sure that's a Baby fail. steps, Eric. Uh, Baby that's steps. A, uh, that's a 22. Nope. Okay. Ooh, there you oh, go. Uh, a <laughs> 20... 24? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you, Eric is now second guessing uh, building all these arms. Where are you to fight with swords? swords. <laughs> Funny man. Okay. Tarzan, it's your turn. Oh. To fight this mighty war hoon. <laughs> Just rip his arms off and beat him with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's kind of a John Carlin really match. That is, yeah, he's not really a showman. And, and, yeah. you know, he's better at archery. I think this, he's real this, good at archery. This, this dagger thing's been working it's out. Really good, it's really doing well. Pretty, yeah, it's, it's going pretty, great pretty for well. you. It's so, going great for you. Uh, first, second, so third. Much for me. Oh. Well. <laughs> Did I just see a 19, Mo? Uh, no, sadly. Oh, okay. um, an 18. Oh, great. So, how about a 31, a 20, oh. and a 28? Okay, the 31 and the 28 hit, but the 20 does not. 20 does not? Does not. Hmm. This guy hmm. is a, uh, a warlord, which is the same archetype that you have, which allows him to get, um, get, a, bunch get of... a high AC without wearing armor. At the expense, At of, the expense of, of other bonus feats. Yeah. Right. 22. Uh, 22 damage? Yes. Is that with all the attacks, that is or is with, that just that the first is one? With all the um, okay. Uh, well, he is still he's mm. still up. Mm. I'll just keep him busy for now. Yeah. Uh, John Carter. Okay. So I would like to do non-lethal damage. Okay. Which I'm forgetting. As as a non-monk, I have to take a penalty on my arm strike for this. Correct? Or do I uh, to do non-lethal to... damage? Because I have improved. No, I, I think I think. You've Let's just say you can. Yeah, do okay. I'm sure the chat room will let us know if we're on. Yes, exactly. Uh, exactly. Go for it. Um, okay, so I'm going to, to to try and pummel her with both of my fists. Um, I guess one of them is a pistol whip. Um, <laughs> because I do still have the pistol in here. Sure. Um, and that's going to be a 35 and a 23. Both of those hit. Okay. Um, and they're both going to be minimum damage of okay. 9. Uh, nine each or nine, nine each. Total? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first hit, you oh, just... Oh, and the rolls were higher because we're flanking, so... So the first hit, you just clock her, you know, uh, on the side of the head, and she's really reeling, and then you take that pistol and just slam the other yeah. side of her head, and she just goes down like a bag of... I don't know, what do they have bags of in Barsoom? A bag of Barsoom... A bag of Barsoomian baby eggs. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. That's yeah. true. Okay, they, so they she goes legs, down. Yeah. They, they <laughs> hatch her eggs. So she's down. Uh, nicely done. Hear what chat has to say? Yeah, sure. What does chat uh, have to say? So it says, improved unarm allows you to do lethal. It doesn't force you to, so no penalty. Okay. Yeah. That's what so. Yeah. Okay. So, Thanks, Internet! Yay! <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Red Sonia, it is your turn. And actually, the woman has... Uh, she's fallen. Mm -hmm. So she's not dead. You can still see uh, her chest is rising with each belabored mm -hmm. breath. But she is knocked out. So, All right. What do you do? 
There's still don't a kill her. Don't kill huge. Her. There's a fight going on over here. There is. <laughs> yeah, but there's fire in the way. And? <laughs> she read Sony. It's true. It's true. The red is for fire. Yeah. <laughs> the red is for whatever it needs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she said, uh, let's for see. A lot of things with this one. Yeah. Oh no. my god. I'm running through the wall of fire. How bad oh is it? Oh my god. Is? Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me even look here. Uh, you get a reflex save. Or maybe that's didn't just even, if it gets dropped I, on you. Didn't even try to I, jump it, did you? Just. It's only ten feet high. <laughs> uh, okay. So no, there's no save. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, because I'm running through uh, it on purpose. Eleven. You take twenty-two points of damage as you run through. Excellent. The wall. That is the most. <laughs> Badass thing that you could imagine. It's fine. She has your, she has your brute. She can drink later. She is. is that a scream of pain or? Yes, yes. It's hard yes. to say. Yes, it is. It's hard to it say. is a scream. It is a scream. All right, I will head up this far. Okay. Double move up to the other. Bits foot. of flame are still trailing, and um, with little clothes she's wearing, and uh, and some of her hair, but but you make it through. Uh, sh- the, the woman at your feet is breathing, but is knocked out. Good. Um, uh, Kel Kevoth of Warhoon <laughs> knows no retreat or surrender, and in fact is going to attack four times. And I'm not using this die. I'm no <laughs> fool. Uh, uh, really quick, I gotta say that that came from Jarhead in the chat. I didn't get credit for that. Thanks, Jarhead. There. Um, okay, so uh, here comes... Ooh, I'm using my favorite real die. Uh, so the first attack is a 29. Oh, that'll hit. Yes. Okay, so for damage on that, uh, oh. maximum, <laughs> you take... Uh, tw- Tarzan uh, talked too much smack. <laughs> uh, you, you take 21 points of damage from oh. that first hit. The second attack... Uh, is probably going to miss, but I'm not 100% sure. 22? Nope. Okay. Then you've got two more attacks. Uh, the first one is a potential crit, and it is a, a 32. Oh, oh yeah. Let's see if we yes. can confirm that bad boy. No, and we cannot, no. but you still are going to take a oh, minimum this time. Yeah, you take eight points of damage. And the other one's a mess. So, uh, so he carves you up pretty good, uh, but uh, it's now your turn. Tarzan. As to my pretty scar. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's the only clothes you wear. Jane, Jane likes them. Yeah. 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 Jane liked men with scars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> First, second, third. Oh God. So <laughs> I can see it from a distance. Twenty-three. 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 Miss. Natural three. And yeah. Then... Yeah. So does a. Uh, that's 27. 27 is a hit. Okay, and then a 26. Hit. All right, well, two out of three ain't bad. 13. All right, so uh, is that with both attacks? <clears throat> yes, that was both. 13. Um, okay, uh, still up. <clears throat> this guy's a tough customer. Uh, it's just his muscles are rippling. He's a big dude. John Carter, it's your turn. I have tiny knife. So. so I don't have anything to tie her up with. I assume she's going to be out for a while. But your uh, your punching prowess and yeah. experience tells you she's going to be out for a while. I mean, I could just keep <laughs> beating <laughs> on her. <laughs> <laughs> There's no limit yeah, to, right. to non-lethal damage they can take. Um, so I'll, I guess, once again, jump over the... F- Flames. Okay. Uh, how far does that get me before I have to start? Uh, you can basically show me where you want to land, and I'll tell you if you can or not. Like over here by. It's totally it's fine. Okay. Yeah. And then um, that's one move action for the yeah. jump, and then five, ten, fifteen, twenty-five. Actually, uh, when I land here, I still have my gun. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. You gonna fire into melee? I'm gonna fire into melee. It's okay, so a minus four penalty. Yeah. Um. Is a twenty-six. That Touch. is a, a definitely a hit. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry about the explosion. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's going to do six points. Okay. Um, plus another. S- Give me a reflex save, Will. Oh, much better. How about twenty-one? So it's two d six on the explosion. Yeah, and do they do I roll damage separately or each no. one? No, it's seven. Okay. Uh, oh man. Okay. Uh, uh, did I not make it with a 21? No, you made it. Oh, yeah, you made yeah, it. Yeah. So you take, uh, three. you take three. three. So, uh, Kel Kevoth of Warhoon. 
Well, I still looking don't have a killing blow except for the feet. punching out the lady. He's looking unsteady <laughs> on his feet. Red Sonia. Oh, here it comes. Well, Red Sonia isn't looking too well herself either, covered in cuts and scorch marks. Oh, yeah? She might not be able to take but another maybe, hit. Maybe the, the but flames, you know, seared the That's not going to stop her. All right. So here she goes. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'm going to move up. All right. So you double move there? Yeah. Okay. So you are there. All right. Um... Uh, hey, it's her turn. She does nothing. It's now <laughs> Kel Kevoth of Warhoon's turn. Who does he fight? If you submit now, we let you live. Maybe. Pursue me. Yeah. Pursue me uh, no. <laughs> Submission is shame. And even yelling so that almost, death. almost not to the <laughs> this one. But instead, he's going to take one more just swing. Oh, he right? must be at zero. Tar- he's at zero. <laughs> he's going to take a swing at, at Tarzan. Uh, and he oh. uh, probably misses. Uh, he gets a tw- uh, 21. He misses and he falls down. The blow knocks himself out of the fight. We are technically out of initiative at this stage. Uh, uh, and also indicated we have... I know we have yeah. we have a short period of time left. Uh, so you've got one dying uh, enemy right now in the form of the Warhoon. You have a knocked out enemy in the form of so this woman on the other side of the fire. Yeah. yeah. I have 50 um, feet of rope. We also have all these vines around. I'm sure that we can yeah. tie them up. So uh, what do you guys want to do? Tie them up. Okay, you gather them, you tie them. Eventually, you tie find them a way to each to other. To put yeah, out that to fire, it's gonna make it okay. harder. Uh, but now, uh, the the guy is bleeding to death. So, how do you want to deal with that? <sighs> you can make a heal check and train. I have heal at oh, plus you six. Can, okay. okay, give me a roll. <laughs> nine. Mm. Um, nine. Tarzan sticks his fingers inside the wound and is like, <laughs> oh. "I think he's really hurt." And well, he if he was at zero, he just drops him. No, he's at minus one. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. yeah. So he's bleeding. So, uh, you know, uh, whatever. Eventually you stabilize him, but he's really bad. And is I not assume his con down. is high enough. Um, oh, yeah. He's, he's, his con is, uh, just for the sake of the argument, his con's 12. So he's, so we've he's got 12. Now. His strength is 20, by the way. So oh, nicely done. Right. So anyway, so that's cute. Ev- <laughs> so eventually, uh, eventually uh, the, the woman uh, comes to and uh, she looks up at you and says, Heliumite scum, I thought I could take our revenge on you, but I guess you're just as good of a warrior as they always say. That is why I am the Jeddak of Helium and you uh, are my loyal subject. (laughs) She looks not (laughs) happy about that. John Carter, you bad man. She is not happy about that. Um, What is her name? She says, I am Koja Noor. Of Zodenga. I used to be a noble, but your pathetic puppet government uh, stripped me of my titles. Mm, Sounds pretty pathetic. (sighs) (laughs) (laughs) So what, are you going to to murder me? Is that what this is all about? The great justice of John If I wanted to murder you, you would already be dead. The fact that you are speaking uh, is evidence of the nobility of my rule. I see you are just as <laughs> modest as they say. <laughs> I, I saw him take great pains to avoid killing I him. am the most modest person I know. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. <laughs> um, so who are you working for? What is, what's the deal? Well, we uh, have heard rumors uh, with my allies, uh, have heard rumors that the great goddess Phantoma has gone missing from the jungle, so we thought we would come and see what we could do to sweep up her holdings and perhaps uh, claim uh, her titles and throne for ourselves. If I've lost one title, well, perhaps I can gain another. Or perhaps not. Perhaps not. <laughs> uh, who are your allies? You have laid Zodanga low, John Carter. You and your Zodanga was th- low to begin with. <laughs> you forced me to take up with <laughs> with, with Warhoon, and my allies are the White Martians. 
the therns, the holy therns, who you also demolished and deposed. Here in the worldscape, we all have a second chance to build something new. Yeah, how's that working out for you? Up until about <laughs> 15 minutes ago, it was going very well. I'm sorry, 15... Rounds? Uh, so no, I was trying to think of the Barsoomian word for... for oh, yeah. Uh, right. Zodes? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so she says, um, uh, we are headed to, uh, to the, the lost city of Koras. So, you know, so you know nothing of the cause of Phant- Phantoma's disappearance? She's uh, just n- n- honestly, uh, and I have no reason to lie. You've utterly defeated and humiliated me once again, John Carter of Virginia. Uh, I, uh, I, we don't know. Uh, you brought it upon yourself by attacking us. First. Yeah, yeah. She has points. <laughs> <laughs> she has many points, and they've all gone yeah. into this lady. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, uh, we all we know is that the, the jungle goddess has gone missing, and that uh, that if we can. Uh, perhaps uh, take over her stronghold, then we can use that as a launching pad to for mm. other conquests. She says, mm. she kind of looks away from Tarzan when she says that. Mm. Mm. Do you guys want to other conquests? Anything? Yes, your pathetic council. We would, we're planning to wipe out your council. Mm. We were. But, uh, Tarzan really looks around and says, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we should have planned more, clearly. Uh, um, yes, well. Are you going to let me, are you going to just kill me? What's your plan? Um, were, I could be were useful these, to you. Were these rats theirs? Like, did they summon them, or? No, I or mean, they, 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 they were under their mine. control. They, they are mine, they were enlarged by my yeah. magic. Okay, all right, um, and got it. they're dead, you... You know how hard Olsios are to find? Much more difficult here in the worldscape than in yeah. Boston. Where they Is the it. fire still burning? No, you guys put it out. Okay. Um, I don't know how, but let's put it I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted to Han Solo it and shove her inside one of these things just for the hell of it. Yeah. But um, We strip her and leave her for the jungle. <laughs> yeah, does she have any any cool stuff? Yeah, I mean, she does. She's got, like, that sickle, like a really good sickle. Um, and uh, she's got a spear. Who fights with a sickle? She, oh, no, no, what? She does. <laughs> Um, she has a potion. Um, she's got a wand. Uh, she's got a breastplate. Uh, she has a shield that she wasn't really using. Um, I don't think any of us she has use a cloak. these things. Hmm? Um, Tarzan need cape. Yeah, Tarzan gonna throw on that cloak. Yeah. All right, it's a cloak yeah, it's of resistance. For surf, it's working for Matthew it's a cloak, McConaughey. Yeah. It's yeah. a cloak of resistance plus one. Yeah, you look a little bit more like Taboo now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so you, you get. Uh, there's no reason to, to identify. It's kind of my least favorite rule. None of us could anyway, anyway yeah. because Couldn't we don't anyway. have the skills. So yeah, it's a plus one cloak. Reason. Tarzan has sweet cloak. All right, so what do you guys want to do next? Leave them tied up for the yeah. Jungle. What is the let what the does jungle, the dude have? Let the jungle eat them. Uh, the dude enemy, has, has in your head. a dark mm-hmm. rifle, uh, four long swords, um, an amulet, uh, and a belt. I'll put on the amulet. All right, it's an amulet of natural armor plus two. Woo-hoo. Which you may already have. I don't already have that. Okay, one. great. All right. Now we just leave them tied up. Okay, I'm just going to leave them for the jungle creatures. Yep. Sounds good. So eventually, you guys um, uh, uh, walk through the forest and you reach uh, a, a, a vast stone ziggurat in the center of, um, of the, uh, the, the uh, clearing, essentially. And all around the clearing, you see a huge number, like maybe even like a hundred different um, uh, people of all shapes and sizes. You can see there's green Martians. You can see that there's like orcs. You can see a lot of humans of all variety of skin tones. um, uh, And and just a ton, there's an elf, things like that. And all of them are just covered head to toe in blue pigments. And they have Ooh. skull visages in their face. Yeah. And uh, and that's what you guys see. And they're all kind of dancing around in some sort of ritual uh, around. Do they the notice era. us? They don't notice you yet. You watch that for a few minutes. Yeah, figure, learn, 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 the, yeah. learn the steps and then yeah. work our way You in. notice at the top of the ziggurat, there is like a brazier. In, in, in that brazier, there is like a blue flame that is coming up. Mm. And it's sort of dancing. And, and weirdly, it almost looks as if the flame is flickering and dancing in, in alignment with the movements of the, some of this sort of primitive mm. dance. Little special that. effects. Yeah. Um, is there anyone up by the or yeah, there's a there's like, like a, a there's a yeah there's a there's a there's a guy 
Um, looks like a like actually like a, a, a light skinned, almost like a land of the Linorm Kings kind of a guy with a big yellow beard. Um, but he's got a blue, you know, blue paint and, and, a, and a skull. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, paint. Does he face. look unslain? Uh, no, it's not. It's not. Oh, cool. It's not my own character, Ostog the Unslain. Uh, it's just a just a barbarian, guy. and he's got like a couple of bones that he seems to be like holding in his hand, and he's sort of almost like semaphore signaling different dance moves and things like that. And then suddenly, uh, he like lowers both of them, and all of the 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 primitives kind of kneel down as if they're honoring the. Um, the the ziggurat and he does not bow down and it's like as soon as they kind of bow down he's looking right at the three of you guys and he clearly sees you covered in blood yeah and And blue and And blue and blue and blue blue. yeah Yeah, that's fair yeah um greetings yeah so do you so you would probably know the most about phantoma is there some sort of like symbol of veneration that we should make well, I mean, this is her cult, really, which which is, I mean, I have some familiarity with Phantom of, but not necessarily her. I mean, I know all about it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. You yeah. actually know her. You know, yeah. I mean, like, you're so, almost friends. Yeah. As much as you can be friends. Do you have a secret handshake yeah, that you do just, with her yeah. that we could, you know? Yeah, is there anything that, that Tarzan would be able to do to, like, you know, we come as friends, we come in peace? You could just walk yeah. forward and yeah. say that. Yeah. 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 Greetings. All right, you're going to do that? Yes. Okay, so you walk forward, and... Um, None of the primitives on either side of you, because there's kind of like a central walkway almost, they don't even look at you. Like, they're fully in reverence of the ziggurat. But this this leader guy uh, looks right at you as you come up. And what do you say? I'm sorry. Like, greetings. I come as a as an ally of Phantoma. Uh, uh, and the, the man looks right at you and he says, You are Tarzan, first king of the council. Yes. I am Reloth, the High the Priest of Phantoma. Oh. You have come during an important time of ritual. We seek contact with our goddess. So do so we. So do we. Yeah. Word of your heroism and the council has spread far in these jungles. Phantoma herself gives you honor and speaks well of your name, First King. We have been dancing the bone ritual for three days, and we have not heard from Phantoma. We believe that she is somehow gone. We believe that it may be time to extinguish the blue flame. And he looks at you as if you're is, supposed to know what that is. Means. Is this bad? Like, is I mean, say, I assume so. Bad. Sounds bad. He Unless says, it's starting a forest fire, yeah. it seems you could keep the flame going. When Phantoma first came to these jungles, before even your arrival, she had to defeat a mighty lord of this jungle. And the only way she could trap this lord was by stabbing him with a spear infused with some of her own life force. He is buried within this great pyramid. We believe that releasing him will also allow us to contact that sliver of Phantoma's self and it may return her to us, or perhaps it may tell us where she is. What was, sorry, John Carter of, of Barsoom here. Um, <laughs> what, what, I assume the guy doesn't know me. He doesn't know you. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, so if she had to kill him, is he a bad guy? He is not dead. The jungle lord lives still, uh-huh. transfixed by the spear of Phantoma. Okay. In but the ziggurat. I got that part. But. It, he's a bad guy, right? He was a great uh, destructive power in jungle before... Yeah, and you want to let him go? We need our goddess. Our religion is nothing without our goddess. But if the Phantom forest itself... needs Phantoma. Surely great warriors such as yourselves were delivered by Phantoma herself to defeat this 
great jungle lord again. But if Phantoma's missing, how could she deliver us? Her spirit infuses this jungle. She, she works cold. in mir so. miraculous okay. ways. Yes, you're right. She was invented by Fletcher Hanks, who is insane, and she could do pretty much anything. I mean, he doesn't say that. Uh, <laughs> so she's like any other pulp hero. <laughs> and then, uh, anyway, uh, what do you advise? If if we if we extinguish the flame, will you help to defeat the jungle lord so that Phantom's spirit may be free? Uh, well, we might let's get first. let's get this spear first. So that we can use it against the spear is buried in the ziggurat. Yeah. In well, yeah, but yeah. so's the so's the guy. So in yes. order to release him, don't we need the spear anyway? We will need to extinguish the flame to release her. Uh, all right. Um, make me a perception check. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Twenty. You're still in the jungle. Uh, natural. Yeah, no There's automatic still failures. There's still better than me, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've got a 19, even with, so... Even with that, it's, i still got a 22. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 22? With a natural one. All right, so you hear, like, 150 feet behind you, okay? Like, an only ant because only, you're... Yeah, only you hear an ant thing. crawling across the leaf. <laughs> no, you hear chant... And it's, it's not like the chanting you heard from these primitives. And in fact, you notice as you hear this that a couple of the primitives who have not looked at you at all mm -hmm. kind of like get up and look behind them. And you can see standing 170 feet away, bloodied, holes in her all over the place, your old friend Koja Noor of Zadanga who you left behind. What? She was tied up and to And she dude. was tied up. And she is gesticulating and casting a spell. This is and as good. she casts a spell, as she finishes some five seconds after you notice, the blue flame at the top of the ziggurat is completely uh -oh. extinguished. You might even say quenched. And the moment that flame goes out, a vast shaking is, is felt all throughout this lost city, this ruined lost city. And the ziggurat itself seems like it is shaking. And finally, the ziggurat, just huge stone pilings fall off the ziggurat and slide down the, the, the ramps and, and, and bounce off each stage until one giant one comes and crushes like six primitives as they kneel down. The primitives start freaking out. They're screaming. They're running in all directions. This was their and idea. You just they hear, wanted to do boom, this. Boom! <laughs> boom! Boom! And the ziggurat basically just explodes in a cacophony of dust and, 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 uh, and, and falling stones. And from inside you see a vast shadow. And it slowly stands. Good. And it is a simian creature. It is 40 feet tall. This giant king of a gorilla. As it looks out at you with hateful eyes. A massive spear sticks out of its breast and through its back. And its face is blue and it has in the What's shape a of a skull mm. and this blue skull's black eyes look at you as it shouts out <laughs> and i'm afraid that's where we have to end oh. today so. Oh. so there you have it you but have, i'm sure we're victorious you yeah. have <laughs> got this. a yeah. fragment <laughs> of the soul of the great jungle goddess we didn't Phantom free anything well, um, By, it was Kojanur. It was jungle. Would have just been better at killing her. I think. So yes. Or so you guys are. Yeah, we have killed her. Mostly yeah. victorious in your quest. Yeah. Uh, yes, and so uh, so that is where we'll have to end it. Uh, Fantima is missing. Um, some shard of her soul seems to still inhabit this giant king of a gorilla. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Uh, 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 but so that's it. That's the that's the session. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I uh, hope you guys had a good time. I certainly yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. it was way better than working in the word mines. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> sure get back to work, God oh. uh, So uh, so we'll do a worldscape Q and A. I'll be joined by uh, Christopher Paul Carey, a, a big Burroughs uh, fan and uh, author who has written the Deja Thoris comic that is part of the forty five dollar tier of this humble bundle. Thanks everybody for your time watching us, and thank you uh, for. 
um, uh, your donations and your support of the uh, Pathfinder uh, uh, Worldscape Ultimate Crossover Humble Bundle. Hope you enjoy the Dynamite comics you're getting, the Pathfinder uh, PDFs, um, and the miniatures uh, and the comics, which we will be shipping out in the first quarter of 2018. Thank you for your support. We're going to shut down the, 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 uh, the stream for just a second so we can chop it up more easily uh, and uh, post it on, on YouTube a little bit later. Uh, come back in just a couple of minutes and Chris and I will be happy to answer any questions about the game that just happened, about the Worldscape project in general. Uh, you can throw him hard questions about uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs and he'll probably know. You can throw me hard questions about William S. Burroughs and I hope I'll know those. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But thanks again. I really appreciate your time and your support. We'll be back soon.